Okay, I think it's time to call the meeting to order. So we'll call the September meeting to order. Uh, Man McCrook, will you take a roll call? Tom Duffy? Here. Stacey Hessel? Here. John Wigheimer? Here. Brian Bizonette? Chris Rest? Here. We have a forum. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> the pledge. Of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in this hope, and liberty, and justice for all. Okay, no certification of compliance, Madam Clerk. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Okay, thank you. So now public comments. Uh, Linda, do you have a note here? Do you want to? Um, would, can I be recognized under agenda item 16 before you start that agenda item? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else online? No. Okay. Um, let's go to then item number eight, uh, Surrey County Egg. Okay. You approve the minutes. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Very well. Very controversial. We've got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, County Egg. Anybody here on the Egg? Stacey, do you know anything about it? Uh, I volunteered at the fair and it seemed like it was successful, but I don't have a report. I'm not on the board. So. Okay. Who, who does? Um, the president is Rick Christian, and so he said he was going to try to come to the meetings, but I know his job changed. So. But maybe even if they submit a written report, so okay. we have some idea, and not and even quarterly or something. Yeah. yeah. And it's difficult when it comes time for asking for county help. We don't know anything. You know? Right. I so. think I think that he has communicated with uh, Andy directly, but I'm not positive on that. Okay. Okay. Then we'll go to the University of Wisconsin Extension, and we're on. <laughs> Karen County got it. Yeah. Is she, can she hear us? Well, she said she, she said she was going me. back for two months in Maryland. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll. So, okay, let's move on into the Hayward Lakes visitor. Oh. Karen, <laughs> good. Okay. Good morning. Meeting on a Tuesday after holiday I weekend. I just oh, got. did you guys all get here on time? <laughs> um. Okay, what did I do? Okay. So. We, I just did kind of a summer recap. Um, our general website users were up 5.1% from the previous summer, which is interesting, I think. Wisconsin, Illinois, and Minnesota are the top three states again. <clears throat> um, we had, you know, I just kind of keep track of social media and like what posts are the most popular. And there was a very adorable young couple. I don't know if anybody saw it. They got engaged and they actually put it on our social media. They were over by Lake Hayward, you know, the little bridge there. So that just went crazy. We had 4,798. Huh. Um, or wait, no, that was that. No, we reached 2,819 people for their little engagement. Anyway, um, Facebook is up about 1%. Instagram is up 11%. Still, uh, Instagram seems to be growing. YouTube, that was, um, remember, I think I've been talking about that, how we clean that up, and we kind of got everything so it has a title. And so that's really made a huge difference because we had 1,421 views compared to a year ago at the same time. So um, getting that all cleaned up. So if anybody has YouTube stuff for their businesses, get your YouTube videos with proper names. So they're easier to So find. then when Google is in there and they're typing in something like, you know, ATV and a mm -hmm. it'll come up <clears throat> instead of saying video one. Oh. Yeah. Which is, we had a lot of those. <laughs> um, anyway, so we had over a thousand vacation guides were mailed in June, July, and August. So those are still flying out. Um, map requests, those were the top um, map requests that were, we had ATV snowmobile, then the corridor map that we do with ITBEC, Birchwood Bobcats, and then the Explore map. So the Wisconsin Department of Tourism, what do they got going on? Um, oh, so I applied for a destination marketing development grant. And just to refresh your memory, that's kind of, we're going to find out if we're doing the right branding. Um, 
uh, anyway, so the max award is 39.5, but um, you can only get 50% of what the marketing or what the research company um, is charging us. So I only applied for, um, we'll be eligible for 15,000, a little over 15,000. And I'll find that out probably end of October. Um, fall color to report tour reports just to let you know that's something that we do so if you go on to the you know internet and you type in what's fall color in Hayward or Sawyer County we are the ones who put that information in there so we're very busy with that because we have to change that twice a week we and they don't just want words they want pictures they want actual proof <laughs> so it's it's time consuming and it's very popular um and then let's see here oh and interesting enough um we just got some stats from tourism that october is the second highest month for overnight trips so you gotta look forward to people coming here in october um just our fall campaign has started everything's already rolling with that vacation guide we um when i printed this we had 300 entries, but we ended up with 426 entries for our photo contest. Um, so that's that's 426 photos that we can use anywhere we want in our vacation guide, in our maps, whatever. So if anybody needs good pictures, always remember we're a nice resource for that. Um, the first proof of the new guide will be October 11th and 12th with it going to print on October 27th and then we usually get it delivered the first week of December which hits our first sports show um so and it seems the timeline seems to work really well for that and then we got a couple um public relations things our 32 adventures have finally been completed we did have Mad Dog and Merrill here August 25th they were at the fish freshwater fishing hall of fame and then at the information center, we are hopefully in the next month here getting our new roof and new windows replaced. And then this is some of the free PR we had. Any news on room tax? Um, what about room tax? Yeah. Anything? Any new communities you mean? Or? Yeah, or any reports on how they're doing? No, it's going good. We're collecting it. We're spending it. We're <laughs> we're for yeah, it's good. good. Okay, anybody have any further questions? Okay, let's move on then to economic development. We have no report from Sheldon, but he kind of reports quarterly, I mm -hmm. think. So then let's go to the library. Uh, oh, you're on. Get some solo today, huh? Um, well, we have a couple interesting things going on related to NASA's Artemis project. We've got a big display and photo op where kids put their, which they love, their heads through a cardboard astronaut uniform and so that's going on along with a post-summer reading program for the younger kids and adults um because we're trying to keep the momentum going from the summer people coming in and um it's library september is library card sign up month and all the libraries in northern waters work together on this and Three new library card holders or those who share a library story are eligible to enter a, a drawing for a $50 gift card. And last year, somebody from Hayward got it. So everybody's applying again. And if you looked at the photos on the back, I know they're kind of not so clear, but in 2016 i met a gentleman who prefers to remain anonymous great guy um he wants to leave this sculpture this giant sculpture to the library when he and his wife pass on and it was worth thirty thousand dollars when he purchased it and now he hasn't even disclosed to me how much it's worth but it's a great deal the artist has become the sculptors become really well known so that doesn't help the library financially or monetarily but it does establish the library it's it's more of an attractant it'll be placed smack in front of the front door like a fountain would 
and it really fits the history of our area. So I'm pretty excited about it. But he also is going to leave 13 paintings worth anything from 500 to $6,000. And he says he does not care what we do with them once he's gone. He says sell them outside of Hayward so we get the full value. But that will be a great help to the library. And it's not like I want to see anyone pass on by any means, but this is a really generous thing for his wife and him to do. And Kelly Egger and the high school art students have finished this giant butterfly, wooden butterfly witch mat Ostrander put up on the brick wall of our patio. And it's a great photo op for the kids. It's beautiful. You have to see it. It's humongous. And let's see what else. Someone has passed away who had given us $15,000 for construction, um, special things we have to do with the building since it's getting older. And I'm concerned about that because that was a source of money every year to help us, you know, replace like furnaces, things like that. However, he had told me at one point we were in his will. So we'll wait to see what happens with that. And the library has to totally replace the roof because of that last hailstorm, but it's covered by insurance. So that's pretty much what's going on. What, what is that sculpture made of? When, when, what is it? What is it made of? What's it? Oh, it's bronze. Oh, bronze. So it'll it, be out, you know, outside then. Yeah, outside the front door. It's, it's huge. And in fact, the owner told Bill Turner, local architect, to make it happen after he passes on and they're going to build a base and have a stone face on it and a railing around it so kids won't be as likely to climb on it. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's going to be beautiful. Beautiful at the entrance. Good. Good. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Ms. Nucky emailed, I sent it to email just prior to the meeting. She emailed a slight report for winter, so you'll have it in your inboxes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then uh, move on. Moonrise Trail Report. Hi, um, I hope you had a good weekend, everyone. It was short. Uh, I rode all the trails in Sawyer County over this weekend. A lot of traffic. I've never seen so much ATV traffic at the campgrounds, the resorts, the restaurants, gas stations. It was a phenomenal amount. Um, an increasing number of families I'm seeing on the trails in large multi seat machines, including their dog. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen just like entire families out there because I've been seeing an, an increase in families on the trail. I'm thinking that sometime next year I'm going to start requesting look into grants for putting some trail side gazebos, picnic gazebos, things like that, um, maybe restroom facilities. We we have a few throughout the county, but I think we could use more. Because because of the families that are on the trails, um, let's see. There's there were several organized rides in the area. I'm not going to go over each one. Uh, some uh, proceeds went to cancer, kids safety, large group rides. It it was common for me to see five to ten machines in a group, and that's been all summer. But I saw a lot of them this this weekend. Fall is expected to be a very busy time to ride. It usually is because of the scenery in the woods and the cooler temperatures. Those machines are usually pretty hot to ride in. So the cooler weather is, is great for riding. We purchased, the Alliance purchased three more data counters. So we have six total. I have not, I just received the, the other three Friday. So I haven't had time to program them and install them. Our other three counters are producing some phenomenal data, and I, I apologize, Lynn, I didn't get uh, these reports done to put them in, but I will next month. Um, like some of the trails, and these are just on individual trails, uh, the, the average daily traffic multiplied by a seven-month riding season for ATVs is bringing in 
like uh, the Tuscovia near winter, 10,236 a year in a seven month year will pass through that trail. 32,000 on the Osprey Creek Bridge in the LCO Loop. That is a phenomenal number passing through that in a seven month period. That's This is the program's estimates. They multiply the average daily traffic by the seven, seven month year. And again, 10,000 on the Lake Elaine Trail on Trail 77 up in Seely Hills, 12,000 on Trail 31 south of Mosquito Brook Road. So, I mean, the numbers that we're pulling in are phenomenal, and I'm excited to get the other counters set up. Oh, let's see. I'm still in the process of gathering data from surrounding counties on their trails and roads open for use. I've, I've just been busy, <laughs> so I haven't finished that project. Um, also working on a motorized sports survey through NORTAC still. We, that's been a little slower moving. Um, we're trying to gather, the committee I'm on, we're trying to put together questions for a survey right now. We, we explored using an outside company because there was some maybe questions on integrity of the data unless we use an outside company, but I think through NORTAC and, and the Northwest Regional Planning Commission, we probably have that integrity built in to those two right there. So we're gonna forge ahead and just form our, formulate our own um, survey data, survey. Let's see. Um, let's, we're gearing up for a busy snowmobile season now. The Alliance is considering selling ads on our snow drags as a fundraiser. Clubs are organizing winter events. The Relic Riders are planning their vintage snowmobile show at Flat Creek on October 8th. And that, that has been growing a lot every year as well. Hopefully we won't outgrow that facility. And they also are planning their 100 mile vintage challenge run in January. It takes a lot of planning for that. I'm on that committee. so. International Snowmobile Day is October 29th, and a few clubs are hopefully planning events to celebrate that. And the only other comment I have is North Country Riders is putting on a meat raffle slash packer game to raise money for signs um, because we struggle obtaining funds for rope signs. There's We can't, can't get that through grants. It's largely donations from businesses and we keep tapping businesses. So we're trying to come up with more money for that. And that's about it. How are you coming with your ordinance? Um, we have completed our draft, the Alliance draft of changes that we want. We have not turned that into Gary Gettard. I've been in touch with him. He's out of town, he's on vacation. And, um, we have to turn that in by October 4th and then it will be presented at the October Public Works meeting. Uh, Don Morotek and I had um, a brief meeting with Andy and in the hopes of perhaps meeting with some of the members prior to that meeting so that we could come to the October meeting with some of the items hashed out instead of making that a three hour meeting so um just waiting to hear back on that of course everyone's been busy over labor day yeah, weekend good. wonderful okay thank you anybody have any questions john um do you have any idea or opinion in, in northern wisconsin who is the best county for atv and snowmobile and you look to a county that says boy they're really doing it where we should be doing it or are we number one or I don't think we're number one. There are several counties that have more road routes open that easily connect all the trail systems and allow people to, to ride directly from their residences. That goes back to the ordinance. <laughs> right, right. Um, well, and that ordinance only covers county roads. We're also talking about townships that allow their roads to be open to give people that live within the township access to the trail system and that also covers people you know renting vrbo properties within those townships it's it's a huge 
thing to be able to just ride right from that to the trail system or jump in your UTV and ride to a local restaurant for dinner or things like that. So those, those few things, we're not quite there yet. I, I hope to be at some point, but we have a lot of things to work through. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Let's see with the Brookie, the uh, next big event is the Brookie Trail Run at the end of the month. They have seven events from the ultra marathon to the 5K, and that uh, pre-registration looks good. Um, also, I've been talking to Joan Sabenka about trying to reestablish the bicycle committee we used to have. John Saunders, for those of you who didn't know, used to report here monthly about mm -hmm. bicycle routes and grants, and he's moved away. So right now we don't have any reports, but we've had in the past a lot of grants from the bicycle trails. And right now, I don't know who's doing it. I don't think anyone is. But John would be good. Yeah. Well, Katie Bardo had contacted me about it, and I told her to contact and, you. And I did so. talk to her. Okay. So hopefully, we get something going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go on then to uh, the historical society. Now you knew. <laughs> okay. So let's go then to number sixteen, which is the review of the board policy and procedure manual and a discussion for possible action. Linda, do you want to be heard on that issue? You're on. Thank you. Linda Silver, 902 Hollyfell Lane, Birchwood, Edgewater property owner. Um, just some things in going over the, this draft. I was hoping maybe the committee would go through each item and identify whether uh, the committee's been doing the items that are listed. And if you have, how have you uh, been doing it and measuring it. Um, a, a couple of meetings ago, I had mentioned that there had been an economic development summit that was held in 2005, and that information is still on the county website. Um, this committee, as far as economic development, did not exist prior to that summit. Uh, maybe it's time, at, since it's now 2022, to revisit holding a summit and gather data. Some of that work has already been done and that Sawyer County has gone through the process of updating its comprehensive plan. I think that happened, the county board approved that in 2021. So, so a lot of the background information is there. And extension was very instrumental in pulling together the various uh, parties and stakeholders in the 2005 event. And maybe they can be called upon to uh, do something more updated. Uh, my comment from last month again is I guess I would like to see some specific items around agriculture uh, that other than the, the fair report that does not get um, recognized as the economic development driver that does exist here. And so if you if the committee has time this morning, please go down through the individual items. And I think item number five is one that I would ask to be pulled out. Um, is that the one about influencing? Uh, the, the committee is the one where organizations can influence the county. I don't yeah. have my glasses on. Yeah, and then, and then also, uh, as far as a, an entity that would report to this committee, I think uh, the county has a representative on PACE, and PACE probably should report periodically to this committee as well. Thank you. Okay. So you've all received a copy of the of the economic development. Um, did you have, you have, have you had a chance to review it? Yeah. I make a motion to approve the, um, the policy again. And go ahead, Andy. I put up on the screen, so there's been a couple small changes. Uh, the item in red is just rewording. The, I mean, we had the attorney look at it. He admitted some of the language because it's just duplicate of what's already in the budget process for committees. Just reiterated, and then um, I did add in, based on the comment last meeting, the libraries were not listed as reporting to the committee. So I added certain kind of libraries and then also put in the word community. So it's economic and community development because I think it's not all of these really are economic related, but it's more sure. community development. Yeah, the library certainly should be on there. Yeah. yeah. Are you, so are you going to make a proposal then, Andy, to add those? So those I've got those those changes listed here. Did we see the motion to approve that? Correct. Yeah, I'm voting to approve, Andy. 
with Andy Rubin. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Very well. It's carried. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just make one other kind of clarify <laughs> based on the public comment. The, the name of the committee is Economic Development, the BW Extension and Agriculture Committee. I think um, I didn't change that. That's what's been in the policies. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was including agriculture on the agenda. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know on the on agriculture. Who, who would report? I'm, I'm assuming it's probably based off of the BW Extension. Historically, having somebody in the agriculture area, that's probably what it's from. Uh, as of now, 4-H used to report. 4-H used to report here? 4-H okay. used to report when I first started on this. Ready? It was UW Extension and 4-H. Okay. And so that makes sense to... Keep them on? Keep them on. Do you want to move to do that? I think Extension's already yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Extension. yeah, okay. But if you wanted to find other agricultural representatives, I'd like to yeah well we always can change it we always can amend it as we go so all right okay um future agenda items so andy can you bring us up to date on the broadband anything new there um nothing real new in the last month um, we dispersed some of the money from the arpa grant prior um there is uh been some contact about there's not going to be at this point another round of broadband grants from the public service commissions. But there is uh, potentially some federal money. There is some federal money coming in in the state for the new year that they'll have some additional grants money. But we don't know if yeah. that'll be or what yeah. shape it is. Or if it'll come in this far north. Oh, you know? No, I said, or if it'll come oh. this far north. Yeah, I don't know any details. I said, there's a pot of money coming. Okay. Did you call for a vote on that last one or just get the motion? I didn't really call for it. Yeah, call for it. Okay. Yeah. I must have been busy typing. Yeah, it was unanimous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anything else, Andy, from the county's point of view, we should know about? How about, about the building? Everything else is going as far as the new the new court, courtroom? Yeah, everything uh, on schedule with that. Um, Cleared out some details with the AV uh, uh, technology that's been, that's been awarded, as well as the uh, fixtures. We were a couple of days behind schedule, but they've been able to juggle um, the order of the work to kind of keep up yeah. with you know, where we need to be. So the goal is still to have it in close to the winter and also a lot of the exterior work done so we can even hit the um, east parking lot. We'll have hopefully a layer of pavement before winter Good. so that parking lot can get put back in use. Good. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Where are you at with the budget? Usually at the September meeting, we hear what we're. <laughs> We're, we're finance meets on Thursday. Yeah. Finance meets on Thursday. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. So we'll find out at on Thursday. Shall we go to the finance meeting? Um, mm -hmm. you can. Or we can. I just had some board members ask yeah. me where we're at, and I didn't. I said usually we he tells us it's September. Mm -hmm. Where we're at is everybody the requests as they came in are in there right now. But so that my request that I asked for is in there. As of right now. Wow. Okay. Just two days to, the red pen hasn't come out yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Thank you. So when do we request from the various groups what their budgets are? And we already have all that. You've already done that. Yep. Yeah, we yeah. got requested those back in July. July. Had everybody request. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Anybody else have any, any other items we want to discuss? Any future items? Okay. Not we will be adjourned. Thank you all. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the day.